Good evening, Commonwealth. Thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Chris Nelson. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Tourism numbers not looking good from China. We will tell you why. Also tonight, a burglary at Annex Condominiums. Police are asking for the public's help. And leaders of the Pacific meet on Capitol Hill to focus on regional issues. In sports, Lady Dolphins run and gun and all together whoop it up. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Holidays happening at Docomo Pacific's Red Friday. Purchase select phones on our popular Now program and choose a free gift, like free wireless earphones or huge discounts on the latest smartwatch. Prepaid friends get free load with select prepaid phones. And get a chance to win a Nintendo Switch when you take a selfie with our new AI dog, Spark. Come in for a happening holiday now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Today, Terwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. It is Wednesday night, December the 4th, 2019. Chinese arrivals are dropping significantly, and it's going to mean flight cancellations in December. The Board of the Marianas Visitors Authority met this afternoon. Central government still owes MVA over $5 million and says they are hoping the issuance of a bond will help provide more regular payments in the coming calendar year. Tom Liu, who works for Saipan Travel, says Chinese arrivals will be much lower this quarter. November, the numbers were pretty down. And December, uh, because of the low forecast, uh, unfortunately, uh, for us, we have decided to reduce the number of flights, uh, two flights from Shanghai and two flights from Guangzhou for the month of December. Lu says a combination of tension between the U.S. and China over trade, as well as the devaluation of the Chinese currency and unrest in Hong Kong have made the market soft this year. They are hoping to resume the full slate of charter flights for the Chinese New Year period at the end of January. In your court news, the Department of Public Safety is seeking your help in a burglary and theft that took place at the Annex Condominiums in Puerto Rico. On Monday, December 2nd, DPS officers were called to Annex Condos, where a male resident told police some items were out of place in his home. The on-duty security officer was called for assistance, where although there was no suspicious vehicles or guests while the security guard was on duty, there were items missing from the resident's home. The items reported missing include three designer men's watches, two gold wedding rings, and an undisclosed amount of U.S. currency. If you have any information on the burglary and theft that took place at Annex Condos, call 911 or to remain anonymous, call the CNMI Crime Stoppers at 234-7272. Today in court, a status conference is continued once again for a 56-year-old Chinese male that has a fugitive warrant from the state of Nevada. 56-year-old Degong Jiang was arrested upon entry to the Saipan International Airport last month. Today in the courtroom of Associate Judge Joseph Camacho, the order to continue hearing on the status conference was agreed upon by both parties. The status conference that was scheduled to continue today has been set for December 9th at 10 a.m., where documents state both parties are attempting to resolve the matter without further proceedings. Jiang is wanted for felony fraud and theft. Insufficient funds check. 
Jane came from China with his wife for a vacation on Saipan when the U.S. Customs and Border Protection officer discovered Jiang is wanted on an arrest warrant. Bail is still set at $346,839. And a local man has been arrested on charges of strangulation, assault and battery, and disturbing the peace. Judge Camacho set bail at $10,000 for 37-year-old William James Rages Fidel. Officers from DPS were called to Cagman 3 yesterday, December 3rd, around 9.30 a.m. Upon arrival, officers learned the caller and her husband had an argument a few days earlier over the victim's constant use of Facebook. Officers learn Fidel had allegedly slapped and punched the victim in the face area over 40 times in front of their children, then proceeded to strangle her until she could not breathe. Documents state in an interview with Fidel, he stated to officers that he beat his wife. Fidel has a preliminary hearing set for December 11th at 9 a.m. and an arraignment scheduled for December 16th at 9 a.m. This morning, lawmakers from our neighboring islands and countries gather at the CNMI legislature to address issues that affect our people and home. Sally Lemus reports. For the rest of the week, 12 representatives from the Pacific Island region will be on Saipan to discuss issues and interests affecting the islands. CNMI Senator Vinnie Sablon says the Association of Pacific Island Legislatures is a solid group of body that has a mission to protect the identity of our islands. The APIO is uh, um, a group of leaders, a group of people that, um, that are aimed, that aims to protect the identity of our islands. Um, you know, the APIO meeting that is held here in the CNMI um, will enable us to share experiences, to share concerns, ideas, and most importantly, solutions um, to uh, what's going on in our region. We all, one thing that we share um, here as Pacific Island leaders is we all come from the same region. So it's uh, very vital that we, um, we have that camaraderie, very vital that we have that togetherness so that we can uh, learn from each other and uh, be each other's resource um, so we can you know, um, uh, protect the identity of our islands and pass it on to our children. And, you know, they're the rightful owners, so um, we gotta make sure that we, we uh, um, protect uh, um, our, our islands and ensure that the identity is there for them. So it's gonna be a great uh, week um, of sharing ideas and uh, talking about issues. So, uh, it's a very, very um, honorable organization to be a part of, and I'm, I'm happy that the visiting members from our, our Pacific Islands, our brothers and sisters from our Pacific Islands are here um, uh, to share and to engage with us so we can all move forward. Today was a kickoff meeting for the Board of Directors to discuss mutual concerns of the environment, education, and much more. This association of Pacific Islands uh, exists way back, and um, its mission is for each of the Pacific Island respective uh, Pacific Island legislature to come together and address issues that are common to the region and uh, to really understand the issues that are affecting, the, affecting, uh, affecting our people and try what other means to try as much as we can to address how we can solve that issues. Many issues now, but uh, I don't have a list before me to at least give you uh, any, any issues regarding environment, health, education, uh, human trafficking, security, all this transportation, you name it. It's not limited to it's issues that concern the region, the region, the Pacific region. So that's why we have the, uh, that's, that's the purpose of the APIL, the mission of APIL is go beyond the ability of, uh, uh, of one jurisdiction to get that voice heard in, uh, in the regional international uh, stage. The APIL was formed in 1981 and is comprised of legislative representatives from American Samoa, Hawaii, Sinemai, Guam, Chuk, Koshrai, Pohnpei, Yap, Marshall Islands, Palau, Nauru, and Kiribati. The Board of Directors meet twice a year to share the progress each island has made and to continue to work together to keep the islands safe.
It's really important that we continue to network with our brothers and sisters across the Pacific, um, that we all come and talk about some of the challenges that we've had, some of the successes that many of um, our brothers and sisters have had in the different islands, and try to replicate that. Um, but also just sharing information about what's been going on in all of our communities to make sure that we can represent our people in the best way possible so we can continue to grow our economies and keep our lands and islands safe. Um, that we protect our resources, our natural resources, especially our, our environment, and, and just really promote the health and, and wellness and the education of our communities. So it's really important for us to convene, you know, twice a year and to keep these networks strong. And so I'm really glad that, you know, as brothers and sisters from the Marianas, uh, we representatives from Guam are able to come here and meet with everybody, and we're so happy to be here in Saipan. This is Halil Amis for KSPN News. All right, thanks, Sally. Next up, we head up to Capitol Hill, where many gather to celebrate a holiday that's uh, first of its kind in the CNMI. Find out more after the break. IT's data was still working. It was easier for us to communicate with Hamni. We would video call, show them around. Like this is how bad it hit Rhoda. During the typhoon, when people were, we were struggling to get back on our feet. IT like push back the date for when to pay your bill. They were helping us so that we don't have to spend the money instead of using it for the bill. We used it to help us to get back on our feet. I'm Vaina Lizama, and I'm with the network that works. Winigi PHA Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye ukalweres rem, uchu weyor safeye emwal evalisiu klalyamweres. Inuminang inyong gamot. Ayon sa inyoreseta ng inyong doktor at alinsunod sa bili ng inyong farmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Welcome back. You're watching the Wednesday night edition of the Channel 2 News. CHC is warning consumers to avoid romaine lettuce grown in Salinas, California. On November the 22nd of 2019, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Food Safety and Inspection Services issued a statewide public health consumer alert on mixed vegetable salad using romaine lettuce from Salinas, California. Then on the 26th, the Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced an ongoing investigation into an illness outbreak caused by E. coli in the mainland. Evidence indicates that romaine lettuce from the Salinas, California growing region is a likely source of this outbreak. Therefore, CHCC is advising all consumers, retailers, and restaurants not to consume, sell, or serve romaine lettuce harvested from Salinas, California. They don't say how you know whether the lettuce is from Salinas or not, but if you want more information about it, you can call them at 234-8950. And it's the first of its kind in the CNMI. It's International Day of Persons with Disabilities, bringing recognition to those who face a number of challenges on a daily basis. First of its kind in the Marianas. It's the International People with Disabilities Day. Um, it's to, uh, basically it's a day to reflect and recognize the contributions that people with disabilities have made in the workplace and in the community as a whole. So this is like uh, monumental, I'm you know, glad to be here. I'm it's the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, a time to recognize the achievements of the one billion people in the world who have a disability. And of course, it's another great uh, way to close the year, International um, Day for individuals. Um, it's, you know, seeing the abilities of each individual um, I've got Vander who's blind, who, who I noticed at the fest 
could play cornhole better than I do, you know. So they're great people, they're superstars, um, and we must celebrate them every day and not just, you know, um, today as International um, Day of Disabilities. So. About 15% of the world's population has a disability and face a number of challenges each day. You know, for me as a VR director, I've always uh, found it to be very uh, sad for, you know, a lot of people with disabilities always um, hiding in their houses, what you call it, hibernating. Uh, they're afraid to come out and connect with the community because, you know, of the, the perception. So now this has to change. And today, this is the official them for, for them to get out and get out of that not show and celebrate and get to know each other. We're as one. But those with disabilities are not alone. Marianne Ariola, the Vocational Rehabilitation Director, says there are many services provided in the CNMI in different areas of need. We have two programs. We have the basic support and the supported employment, as well as the independent living for older blind. So what we do is, you know, for we look out for eligible, eligible applicants to come and apply for that services. And if they're eligible, we provide them um, services like employment, training. You want families and individuals um, with disabilities to, to know that they're not alone, right? You want to know that you'll have someone standing beside you. And then you want to use your experiences to help improve and expand services and fill in gaps that might, that might be in those services. So it's really important because I don't think enough of our community knows. They, 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 they care, but they just don't know. And I think the more people know, the more everyone's going to be able to contribute to making the, that improvement and those expansion of services a reality. And one individual says she helps those with disabilities learn to be self-sustaining. My name is Dorothy Whitehead. I'm I'm the team leader here in, in the uh, CLI. I teach people how to be independent, and uh, I'm running for president for the Voices. So I hope I get support from my fellow CLI. This year's theme is the future is accessible. This is to, uh, you know, allow them to have access to the communi community, the employment, as well as, um, you know, greens out there, like, for instance, the parks, the, the beach, you know. So those, those, those are the things that's what this team is about this year. It's a lot of work, but it's fun, and let's do this, and let's party up. The International Day of Persons with Disabilities, where environmental and social barriers are identified and overcome. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. All right, a lot of passionate people up there doing a lot of good for the community. Absolutely, there were. It was nice, nice to see that. On Guam, an arrest has been made for a robbery that sent an elderly woman to the hospital. KUM has more. Afade Tonto, CNMI, here's what's making news on Guam. An arrest finally been made for the Thanksgiving robbery that took place in Dedito that sent an elderly woman to the hospital, and the arrest was effectuated as a result of the community coming forward with information. Here's more. It was a horrific crime occurring on a day meant to celebrate with family, but for the elderly woman who owns the Bajado Barbershop in Dedito, it was a morning filled with terror and tragedy beaten and robbed on Thanksgiving morning. It was surveillance video that helped detectives track down the suspect, police spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapau. It was shared with the media and by doing so, the Guam Crime Stoppers along with the Guam Police Department were able to receive tip information of the possible identity of the suspect based on the media footage that was provided. The community rallying together and providing information to the police which led to the arrest of Frank Patrick Itasi. According to Tapau, detectives managed to identify Itasi through a photo lineup. GPD Federal Task Force agents helped CID detectives locate Itasi along Nevermind Road in Dedito and brought him in for questioning. During an interview with detectives, he allegedly admitted to his involvement in the incident. Itasi was arrested on charges of attempted murder, robbery, felonious restraint, strangulation, criminal trespass, reckless conduct, theft, and aggravated assault. He was booked and confined. We want to thank the community for their efforts in providing the Guam Police Department with this information as it really uh, showcased the uh, community partnership with the Guam Police Department and of course our community members 
And, you know, again, this is a reminder of the importance of community relationship with the, uh, with the Guam Police Department and all efforts with our endeavors in uh, preventing crime and, of course, securing a safer, uh, safer home for everybody. As for the victim, her son, John Yu, has started a GoFundMe page to help cover the medical expenses related to his mother's injuries and emotional trauma from the ordeal. As we reported, the 61-year-old woman was transported to the hospital unconscious and unresponsive. Yu writes she has since been discharged but suffers from a fractured neck with bruises all over her body and is mentally traumatized. For more information on how you can help, you're urged to reach out to you at yojhan at gmail.com. Hey, stay connected by way of our KUA mobile news app. Follow us on any of the social media platforms and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUAM Digital Digest on KUAM.com. The Guam's News Network, Guahusi Chris Barnett. All right, thank you, Chris. Coming up on the KSPN2 Sports Report, the latest from the M League, A Division. It was a, a game. Holidays happening at Docomo Pacific's Red Friday. Purchase select phones on our popular Now program and choose a free gift, like free wireless earphones or huge discounts on the latest smartwatch. Prepaid friends get free load with select prepaid phones. And get a chance to win a Nintendo Switch when you take a selfie with our new AI dog, Spark. Come in for a happening holiday now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime, at SaipanTV.com. Where to go, what to see, what to do, restaurants, spas, activities, and culture, it's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. Welcome to Marianas Medical Center. We've been taking care of you and your family since 1998. We offer preventive health care services, acute and chronic care for both adults and children. 胃产期以及妇科的检查 신생아 선별 검사 및 영유아 건강 검진 매년 포함인 food handlers, green cards, school and sports clearances Greening in Marianas Medical Center I'm offer for si todo class in servicio para el nombre de familia en mis usillas We accept Medicaid, Medicare and most private insurance plans and we also accept individuals without any medical insurance we're conveniently located in the JKR building on Beach Road, Garapan. Marianas Medical Center, quality health care for your entire family. Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, last week girls high school basketball was a washout. This week, it's boogie time. The undefeated MHS Lady Dolphins pick up where they left off before the Thanksgiving feast. You could say they're still feasting. Okay, we said it. But instead of stuffing their stomachs, Desiree Camacho and her teammates are stuffing the basketball nets. Look at Desiree on defense. The strip. The strong drive in it. Well, she's a work in progress. <laughs> Eagles having trouble getting open. Jamie knocks the ball to Keena Rangamar. Back to the sprinter. The bounce pass to Desiree. Back to Jamie. Back to Desiree. Pass the potatoes, please. <laughs> we need an Eagles highlight, please. Princess Alcantara. Launches the bomb, Katrina Sars. Right girl in the right place at the right time, right? Jamie Pangolin into a wide open Catherine Maggot. Easy victory for these Lady Dolphins who improved to 5 0. <laughs> Cascamacho, the do it all player for Saipan Southern High, going to 
feed Agatha Borja against Agape Christian Academy Torchbearers. Another dime by Cass getting everyone involved. It's, it's called court leadership. She has basketball buried deep in her DNA. She doesn't always make a basket, but when she does it, her teammates have her back. Baskets, few and far in between for Agape. IVU with the swisheroo, but it was all about the Manas who win this 33 to 11. Our M League game of the week features KSPN2 Pyre versus KFAS in the A division, as in AOK. -okay. It was AOK -okay for one team anyway. There was an explosion of goals, but only for one side. KFAS in spiffy white. Versus KSPN2 Pyrie in red on a sunny Sunday afternoon. A few puddles still on the field after an all-day rain the day before. Terrific for falling down into. Speaking of falling down, oh, there's Brad Rizal on defense. Come on, man, you got to get up. You got a free kick. Minsu Park takes it and sends the ball over Dave Bush off the crossbar. And Pyrie successfully defends. Bruce Berline, the pass to the corner. Chris Nelson places the ball in front of the net and... No one home except the goalie. Jara Yobe. He loads up and fires. It's an easy save for the Korean team. Nice run down the sideline by Sam Smith. A one-on-one. -on -one and, well, he beat him and then beats another defender. Around the corner, evades a would-be tackler into the box. Oh, just misses the Here's a great one-arm swat. Trying to keep that score down. KFS fans, they were impressed. Ellie, the corner try, perfect setup for Yogi Singh, but the header goes the wrong way. Oh, he knew he should have had that. Yogi shot deflected in time for the diving stop. Pari fires again, but straight into the goalie's gloves. Si Young Kim and Hwap Young Kim try to get something going. But Smith saves the day for Pyre. Yogi defended, it's deflected out, and then back into the net. It's all KSPN 2 Pyre, 10 to 1 in this one. Here's the wind up and the pick. I don't believe what I just saw! Today's high 83, the low 73. Tomorrow, pretty nice. Don't worry about it. High around 87, low 75. Seas are moderate out there. Sunrise 629, sunset at 545. That's your news, sports, and abbreviated weather. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.